And finally, Ashfordy Hall opens its doors to the public this week. Trial run, apparently. Volunteer, please. Don't all shout at once, gentlemen. Where are the others? What are those? The other police officers. His Lordship requested a minimum of three. Well, what Lord Ashley requested, what we can spare, are two totally different things. These are the mugs, then. Lovers of England's rich heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ashfordley Hall. My name is Vernon Scripps, and I'm your tour guide. If you would be so kind as to follow me. Right, sir, I'm on my way. Let's see my morning paper. I think I left... Oh, here we are. I'm uh, off to Carlston, Sarge. Yeah. A couple of firearm certificates. Good. Take Nicholson with you, will you? Show him the ropes. It does been at my crossword. Thought I'd fill in the odd one or two, Sergeant. Oh, by the way, seven across. It's packing, not package. Thank you, Nicholson. Carry on. Mike, fiver if you lose it. You're on. Press. Certainly, sir, yes. Go and stand by the fireplace. No, I'm the press. Roy Pulver, Ashford League Gazette. Oh, I see. Oh, well, do have the tour on Noble Endeavours Limited, Mr Pulver. Yeah, I should think so and all at ten bob a time. Slow down. Problem, sir. I have a mind to take it back where I got it. Todd is into street with me. Oh, yeah? Recently? Aye. October 1949. He looked me straight in the eye, did Malcolm Todd. He said, you'll not get a day's trouble with that. Here we are. Hey, hey. My father used to have one. Very nice bike. You set a cracking pace, Mike. Ah, AGS 350. Could be the point. Oh, I can see what the problem is, Tom. Thank you. I'll get a spanner. <sighs> Bit of a no wall, is it? No, no, just, uh, just keen, that's all. But I'll tell you what, if you ever get fed up with this beauty, give me a call, will you? Why don't you take it now? Morning. P.C. Alf Ventris. Eileen Jepson. I'd like to ask you a question, Mrs. Jepson, if you don't mind. What about? That coffee you're baking. Is there any going? <laughs> I'm kind. Now, what is this about opening the house to the public? Well, his lordship thinks the rest of us don't know, but he's a bit short of the readies. You should try living on my wages. You should take the tour. 
It's very educational. Yeah, I bet it is. Piece of cake. I don't mind if I do. Uh, shall we move on, ladies and gentlemen? It was actually here in the long gallery that Whitby's most illustrious son, Captain James Cook, was actually commanded to find the southern territory of Terra Australis. Now, as you know, Cook made two voyages to Australia. Picture the scene, if you will. The intrepid master mariner, James Cook, as he... Some of these paintings weren't here in the 18th century. Well, no. Picture the scene, you said. Some of them weren't done when Captain Cook was alive. <laughs> Shall we move on, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> this lot from the stage school. They certainly weren't here. They're 1930s. All worth a few, Bob. Wouldn't you say? Yes, well. Would you like to follow me, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> the theme of shipping in the Ashfordley family continues. And in fact, Bartholomew Roberts, known as Black Bart, the famous West African pirate, actually served as a midshipman aboard one of Sir John Ashford's ships when it was registered with the British East India Company. Now you will know, of course, Fiver. How's the sergeant's exams going? Oh, fine. All you've got to do is a bit of reading. Oh, yeah. Grand little shot, that pediment stocks everything. Oh, I might have a go. Oh, well, yeah, why don't you? Have a crack. Yeah, dinner tonight. Put on, cocktail, cockle van. I speak to our chef, you know. Tom. Tom. Can I get my biscuits, Smickleson? Oh, Tom. I've just had these clean two days ago. For heaven's sake, man, I ask you to run a simple errand. I'm so sorry, it was, it was an accident. Uh, clean this mess up. Bradley, open a window, will you? Now, where are my biscuits? In the night, there are sights to be seen. Stars like jewels on the crown. You wanted to see me, my lord? Yes, come on in, Scripps. How went the day? Oh, splendidly, my lord. Do you know, I'm constantly surprised at folks' interest in other people's business. Yes, well, as long as they'll pay good money for it. How many parties do we have? Uh, just the two, my lord, morning and afternoon. We netted eleven pounds. And tomorrow? Oh, five parties tomorrow, my lord. Five? Champion. Your good health, Scripps. Uh, yes, and to you, my lord. And to uh, Noble Endeavours Limited. <laughs> my lord, if I were to throw in the words diversification and expansion into the ring, how would you react? Cautiously. Well, allow a couple of phrases to simmer gently in your mind, if you would. Safari Park, air show, rock concert. What 
What's that smell? Prawn cocktail sauce. Tom dropped a bottle of it. Over my desk? Over my uniform. I'm never gonna live this down, am I? Look, there's a block of air freshener somewhere. That might do the trick. You remember it, don't you, Mike? Oh, yeah, Craddock brought it in when we caught that sheep rustle up at Mountfield, wasn't it? What did he smell? Only after he fell in the slurry. It must still be in the cells. I'll get it. You'll need a key. Who's there? Mike? Is that you? Estate, my lord, and its place in farming history. Another place for shipping. Yes, well, minor detail. I found it in the shed at Lower Farm. I thought it must be agricultural. No, I, I think this is for. Well, look it up in a book. Let me know. Morning, Mrs. Jepson. Morning, sir. You hold that and I'll show you because if I put that... I've been thinking about what you said last night, Strips. A rock concert. I take it you meant Bob Dylan, Isle of Wight. 30,000 people paying for the privilege, that kind of thing. <laughs> Tell me I'm saying things. I think the point is, my lord, you're not seeing things. Bill, you'll never guess who this is. You're right there, mate, you won't. Bill Weatherby died three years ago. I'm his nephew, Stephen Collier. Bill Weatherby, dead? Listen, you can grieve for him in your own time. Mine's valuable. You've taken all the business from him. Aye. What have you got? Four sketches, preparatory work for oil paintings. And they do not come any classier. 
John Constable. And you are? George Woodford. Provenance? Tucked in the back of the pictures. I'm not interested. What? Well, Bill would have been. Bill would have jumped at him. And all four sketches were by the same artist, is that right? John Constable, Constable. Valued at how much? At the last count, £3,000 each. My guess is they'd still be hanging on that wall if he'd have sent three decent officers as requested instead of the one who spent most of his time in the kitchen. Can you vouch for your own staff, my lord? Well, of course I can. Most of them have been with us since the flood. Except Eileen Jepson. Uh, we took her on a fortnight ago. Uh, just general duties, you know, uh, tea-making, tickets, brochures, that sort of thing. Have a word with her, will you, Bradley? Right, Sarge. So, Mr Scripps, whose idea was this, opening to the public? When it's all going well, it's his lordship's. When it's going badly, it's mine. Mr Scripps, I'd be grateful if you'd accompany us to the station. What for? Well, it's beginning to look as if our art thief was among the visitors to the hall yesterday. In which case, you've met him. And when you were serving lunch in the long gallery, did you notice anything odd? No, but then folk in a queue all looked the same to me. Did any of them ask you about your job here? More to the point, did you talk to anyone about it? I don't think I like the sound of this, Constable. No, it's purely routine, I can assure you. Uh, Nothing to worry about. All the same, I think you'd better take a few days off, Mrs. Jepson. Uh, my lord, I... I'll be in touch again, as soon as all this is over. No, 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 Scripps, Scripps! Sorry, Scripps, change of plan. Ladies and gentlemen, house is closed, no visitors. Turn around, take them away again. Just picked them up, my lord. Get them back to the station and get them off my property. My lord, they Don't well, argue well, with me, Scripps. Get them going. Move. Right, Mr. Scripps. Who have you told about this new business venture with Lord Ashfordley? Friends, family. No one of a criminal nature. We'll be the judge of that. Names, please. Sergeant, look, I know you think I'm hiding something. But my life is an open book. Yeah, all right, one or two pages may be a bit dog-eared, certainly. One or two of the pages are downright missing, Mr. Scripps. Now, who's been handling the publicity for this Noble Endeavours Limited? Well, I have. But it's mainly adverts in the local press. I mean, I don't list what's on display. Vernon, listen. Our man is a professional. He knew exactly what he wanted, ignored everything else but the sketches. So, who told him? where they were. How many times have I got to say it? I'm sorry, I can't help you. Actually, there was one man that stood out from the crowd. George, where are you? I'm upstairs. Well, you're not upstairs, you're in here. Look. Oh, ho, ho. What's wrong? Why should anything be wrong? Just because I'm not where I said I was. Why aren't you up at the hall? Well, I've been laid off for a few days while they sort out this burglary. So I thought I'd come up and see you. Hmm. Oh, George. You wicked, wicked man. What have you been up to? I've been proving that there's no master like an old master. What a waste of time. Thank you, Mr. Scripps. This advert in the local paper he was talking about, I'd like to have a look at it. Well, you think he's uh, made the hall sound like an easy target? Mm, very possibly. Ashford the Gazette, anybody? Ralph, I saw you with it last. What the devil's this? I 
Ash. Fiddle it, please. It adds insult to injury. Sarge, Chief Constable wants a word. I'm not surprised. Morning, sir. Just the job, Scripps. I'm not sure that Vernon will see it that way, my lord. Then in the house, we'll fence everything off. I want at least six feet between the public and the exhibits. Oh, your lordship, we've uh, now decided that the mystery um, uh, tool uh, isn't for holding a cow down during labour. We can all sympathise with a hard-pressed police force of whom so much is demanded. However, to see one of its number replete with sponge cake asleep on duty does not inspire public confidence. Poor old Alfie. Uh, well, he's not a young man anymore, Gina. I keep saying to him, put your papers in, Alf, while you've still got a lust for life. Can I quote you on that? Why would you want to? Because I wrote the article. And you're an ex-copper, and now there's a burglary. I'm doing a follow-up. Uh, just take me back over what I just said. Uh, you sort of implied that PC Ventress was past it. I didn't say that. Well, it sounded like to me. What I said was the local force is under so much pressure these days that it's not surprising. You know, sometimes a... Hey, Mr Ventress. Got your phone call and here I am. Can I buy you a pint? If you do, I shall probably break it over your head. Can I have a word? You do realise there's nothing personal in all this, don't you, Mr Ventress? I'm just a bloke trying to earn a living. There's nothing personal in what I'm going to say to you. Good. Then we're looking at it from a similar angle. I'd hardly say that. Thanks to my appearing on your front page, I now have to fight to restore my good name. Now, apart from taking my photo yesterday, what were you doing? The guided tour. Why? So, when you left the group to take a snap of me, did you pass the library? where the sketches were. I don't know. Well, hang on, what if I did? Well, did you or didn't you? Might have done. Welcome to our list of suspects. That's outrageous. This is an article in one of the Sunday papers, at least. Oh, yes, I can see it now. Copper caught napping fingers Ashfordly hack. What about the other photos you took yesterday? Presumably, I wasn't your only subject. No, but why should I help? Because if you don't, you'll get nicked. See what you've got. Oh. Uh, this fellow with the notebook and the pencil. Any idea who he is? None. He's not one of your lot, a journalist. Hey, Oscar, do you give us a hand? Ring any bells? I oh, know. Can't say it does. Well, I'll be blowed. Well, I didn't think he was still alive. Let alone active. Yes, yeah, George Woodford, Sergeant. Is that supposed to mean something to me? Well, you must remember him, surely. In his day, the most accomplished art thief north of Manchester. The photo taken yesterday at Ashfordley Hall. How oh, the devil he slipped past me, I shall never know. Really, Ventress? Yeah, I remember he used to ride an old AJS. He used to use it to get away cross-country. Yeah, and we fixed it for him yesterday morning. Right. Bring him in. Was it you, Mike? Sorry? The cells. Did you lock me in? Well, we drew lots. It's not an answer. What's the point? Was it you that let me out? A water zip broke. Oh, my car. Tom, Tom, get her in the car now. What about George Woodford, mate? Just get up to his house, talk to him. You should be able to do that on your own. Just remember, he's 18 years old. I'll join you when I can. Right, you're coming. Baby, now don't you 
ever make her cry. Right. Good work. Mr. Woodford. Hold on, George. I'll soon have you free. I thought you were hurt. It's your mate, the no. He's been hurt. As you know, this room has one of the highlights of Ashfordley Hall. Over here, by the window, this table. Now, this table is the actual table that Bram Stoker wrote Dracula at. It was given to Lord John Ashfordley in 1899 as a thank you for his stay here and for allowing him to do his research. Research into what? Vampires? No, Whitby. And vampires. This library, after all, houses one of the finest private book collections in Europe. So they must be worth a few, Bob. Well, of course they are. So, how is he? He'll need a couple of stitches, but apart from that, he's fine. Yeah, can't do that. Uh, can you hold the pad, Tom? Press down on the coat. Well, look, I'll, uh, I'll take him to the hospital. It's all right, I'm going that way. And as for you, Mr Woodford... What about me? Well, for a start, I'll get on to Eileen. No. Uh, she'll have this mess sorted no. out in no time. Eileen who? Williams. No, Williams. Jepson. Eileen Jepson, your cleaner. Are you all right, George? Of course I'm all right. Yes, well, even so, I'd like you to take it easy, at least for the rest of the day. What about this fellow that ransacked my house? Who was he? What was he after? Why don't we talk about that down at the station? Could you both please listen to me? George, this is serious. You have to take the rest of the day very quietly. Well, what do you think we were going to do to him? I'm sorry, Mike. Where did you learn medicine? Hey, there's no need to have a go at me. You were too a bickering like my wife and I used to. Excuse me. I'm just going to get my jacket off. Tea would be nice. Mr. Woodford, this is not a roadside cafe. Sorry. I'll have whatever's going. <laughs> right. Let's sum up, shall we? We have some stolen sketches, an attempted robbery, and a serious assault on one of my police officers. Well, nobody could argue against that. <laughs> Do you know the man who assaulted P.C. Nicholson? No. He just came into my home and uh, he said, Where'd you keep your money? So you've never seen him before? I just said no. Suppose these events were linked. I don't see how they can be. Well, the sketches were stolen on the very day that you, a famous art thief, visited the hall. So? And then your house was burgled. I said he was looking for money. And not for the sketches which you'd stolen? No. So we're talking about a coincidence here, are we? Well... Yes, it is uncanny, I grant you, but uh, then things often are, aren't they? So, where does Eileen Jepson fit in? Or Williams, as you try to rename her up at your cottage. It is Jepson, isn't it? Aye. Ah, She's a friend of yours, right? She uh, <clears throat> does for me. Monday's upstairs, Wednesday's down. And she just so happens to work at the hall. So what? So suddenly you're not quite so confident, are you, Mr Woodford? Look, we've no desire to see a man of your years go to prison. At last, we agree on one thing. <laughs> so let me put this to you. Mrs. Jepson stole the sketches, because, oh. frankly, at your age, we think it unlikely... Th oh, I do wish you wouldn't keep going on about my age. Fair enough. 
But you're hardly in the prime, are you, Mr. Woodford? No. So you roped in Mrs. Jepson to help no. you. I think it's about time we had a word with her. Ventress, find out where Eileen Jepson lives, will you, and bring her in. Oh! Know what? You're wrong about her. I don't need help. Help with what? Don't you know my track record? I've handled paintings that most folk only see on jigsaw puzzles or tea trays. I've had the real thing pass through my hands. I don't need help with a few sketches. So where are they? In my living room. In a hiding place between the chimney breast and the cupboard. Hidden by some loose moulding. I take it you've seen our friend. Who is he? He's the one I told Craddock about. He was here the first day, asking the price of everything and making notes. And he's at it again today. Could I have water? Excuse me. Certainly. What can I do for you? Uh, I believe this is your second visit. Uh, that's right. You find the place so interesting the first time, you had to come back for more. That's one way of putting it, yes. I believe you were here the day of the burglary. If you think you're onto something, Constable, you're wrong. Yes, and how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Well, I don't know where they are, do I? Well, if you don't, Mr. Woodford, who does? The bloke ran sack in my house, ask him. You said he left empty-handed and the sketches were carefully hidden. I was wrong. Uh, and, you, and you were right. You were right, he did take them. And, I, and he wrapped them up in a what's it term? Uh, a, a, a tea cloth. A tea cloth. It's all coming back to me. So you told him where to find them? I must have done. How did you do that? You had a gag over your mouth. What? Well, he took it off. I told him and he put it back on. And no doubt he very kindly replaced the moulding afterwards as well. Well, I don't know, do I? People are funny like that. Mr. Woodford, this is not a game of hide-and-seek, where you steal the drawings and we have to hunt them down. This is a very serious matter indeed, which led to one of my officers being assaulted. You will probably go to prison for your part in it. No, oh, no, but no, no, you, you said you wouldn't want a man of my age. I know what I said and I regret it. Sit down, Mr. Woodford. Mr. Woodford? George? It's all right. I... I've been expecting something. I'm going to come out. I don't think we have time. We'd better take him ourselves. Sorry. How is he? Uh, we don't know yet. I told you to take it easy. This is easy? No. Still, it's kind of right, isn't it? The keeling over in the country, Nick. <laughs> I've been in so many. You're not going anywhere. Don't be daft, woman. It's been on the cards for months. You told me so yourself. George, please. Don't go soft on me. I couldn't bear that. All right, George, what do you want me to say? That I'm glad you decided to go out with a bang? Oh. That's what this is all about, isn't it? Stealing the sketches. One last crack. My jacket. A letter. An inside pocket. To 
to Eileen Jepson? Yes. It's my will. I carry it around with me just in case. Do you want me to send for no. her? No. No. They'll think she's in on it. Just give it to her. Forty years ago, she just suited me down to the ground. Now, I had a fellow Mike. His name is Mike. Give him my age, I guess. I've no further use for it. Been quite a week, Bradley. Ah, uh, certainly has, Sarge. Young Nicholson assaulted. Ashford is wretched drawing stolen twice. The man who stole him the first time, heart attack, whilst being interviewed. I've got a feeling the worst isn't over yet. I'm afraid we've lost him. Had a grand send off. You're going to the wake? I don't know. My colleague Mike Bradley reckons that he was more than someone you just did for. Then your colleague would have been right. I've known some very ordinary men in my time. George Woodford was not one of them. A dangerous man, eh? Even at 80. I didn't know excitement had to be for the young. Do you think he knew him? This man who broke in and tied him up? I've no idea. Why? Well, whoever he is, he may or may not have the sketches. I don't think he has. George swore that he left empty-handed. But when Mike couldn't find the sketches, George altered his story. Oh, George was 80. He, he was confused, maybe. No. no. I reckon he thought you'd taken them when he was covering up for you. Me? A woman who does. If she's thorough, she'd have found that hiding place beside the chimney. Now, if you did take them, George is not the only man to bend the rules. Fancy walk. Well, for a man of 80, he certainly had some dodgy friends. I mean, look at him over there. Not the one facing us. Yeah. I'm sure I've seen his face on the telly, you know. Some bank robber, I think. <laughs> Gina, that's Detective Chief Inspector Barry, Manchester CID. On the other hand, that uh, proper-looking gent he's talking to is Michael John Phillips. He'd rob his own mother if he knew who she was. Dr. Solovey, there's a phone call for you in the other bar. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. So I rather regret coming. I don't approve all this sentimentality about the criminal classes. It seems to me the world's better off without. Is Tricia, well, you know, spoken for, do you think? Spoken for? There's an old-fashioned phrase. Well, is she? No, she's not. You don't sound too sure. I'm sure. Thanks, Gina. Oscar, duty calls. Try, right, Trisha. It's a shame. It's a shame she's got to go, isn't it? Hmm? Best plot on the site, don't you reckon? I wouldn't have believed he had it in him, the old codger. He hated doing it, of course. I hated paying the greengrocer even more. Well, uh, why have you brought me down here, then? Dr. Somerby phoned just after she'd been up to the cottage that day. Wanted me to sort out the mess. Well, I went up there, 
left the mess and rescued the sketches. So we'd have no case against him? That's right. How did you know that they were there? I'd seen them in his kitchen the day they went missing. And just in case you lot were planning to search my place, I brought them down here. You mean 12,000 quid's worth of national treasure is stashed away on a north riding allotment? I was going to put them back in the library of the hall one morning, but his lordship had laid me off. Then George died, and I thought, what the hell, I'll keep them. No, you didn't. I did. I thought, if things are going to be like... No, you did not. You never thought for one minute that you'd hang on to them. Is that clear? Not that I'd have known what to do with them any more than George did. Any more than George did? He knew exactly what to do with them. Well, he phoned up his usual dealer, only to find that the man had been dead for three years. His nephew had taken over the business, wasn't interested. What's going on? Oh, for my sergeant's exams. Oh, give me strength. That's how the sketches went missing in the first place. You lot not keeping your eye on the ball. Hey, wait a second. I was there till you took the visitors outside. You got a problem? He's here again. Bold as brass. Look at him. Taking notes now, totting up everything. I'm telling you, his lordship's going to come down to breakfast one morning and find the place empty. Vernon. We know who took the sketches, and it wasn't him. Where were they? On George's allotment, Sarge. In a shed. How did Mrs. Jepson know they were there? She didn't. It was pure guesswork on my part, Sarge. Let's see. What are you doing? Phoning a fence called Bill Weatherby, who, as it happens, is dead. Good afternoon. Could I speak to Bill Weatherby, please? Not without a Ouija board. I beg your pardon. Fell off his perch. Three years ago. Dead. As the proverbial. Well, who are you, then? I take it you do know the line of work that uh, Bill was in. What have you got? George and Silver. I'm up at Whitby Market tomorrow. Fetch it over. I'll have a look. Who shall I ask for? Stall number five. I reckon he's your man, Sarge. Why? Because he was the only person that George spoke to about the sketches, except us. And what about your new friend, Mrs. Jepson? Yes, but it was definitely a man who hit me over the head, Sarge. Do you know him if you saw him again? Yes, Sarge. All right. Whitby Market tomorrow. I'll clear it with the superintendent. You know what a market overt is, Nicholson? No, Sarge. Well, there aren't many of them, but this is one. They're established in the Middle Ages, see? They enable anybody to buy goods, stolen or otherwise, and have immediate title to them, no questions asked. How's your head? Fine, Sarge. Stitches out tomorrow. Good, good. It was you, wasn't it, Sarge? Me what? Let me out the cell. Well, I had it done to me once as a young copper. I said I didn't mind, of course, but I did. That's him, Sarge. Oh, man. Brown jacket and tie. You sure? Positive. Eat up, Ventress. You're on. There you go. Great, two sugars. As always. Help you? I certainly hope so. I spoke to you on the phone yesterday. Uh, George and Silver. Right. Old mate of Uncle Billy's. Yes, well, I'm afraid that I wasn't uh, candid with you on the phone. Uh, George and Silver, no, but... Uh, Something much more interesting, I mean. John Constable, four of them. I wondered who it was. Got there before me. So where are the others? I left them at the station. Police station.
Good morning, my lord. Your sketches. You found them? Well, not before time, I'd say. Well, fair point, Scripps, but credit where credit's due. Thank you, Sergeant Craddock. That's all in the line of duty, my lord. Uh, now, my lord, may I suggest that we lose the extra security and return to normal? There's a coach load due in at any minute. Right, oh, Scripps. Give Mrs. Jepson a call, will you? Very decorative woman. Like her a lot. Oh, she can have a job back. I don't think she'd be interested, my lord. What? Huh? Well, she seems to have come into some money. What is it with this man? Lord Ashford. Yes? Yeah, yeah. My name's Robert Price. I'd like a word with you about insurance. Oh, no, thanks. I've got plenty. Uh, well, that's a matter of opinion, my lord. Your present cover is arranged through us. When the hall opened to the public, the premium automatically rose tenfold. What? The hall either continues to be a public attraction at ten times the premium, or else returns to being a private dwelling. We await your instructions. Now, listen, mate. There's plenty of brokers in this town, you know, as his lordship will tell you. You can have my instructions now, Mr Price. As of this moment, Ashfordley Hall is closed to the public. Your lordship! Mine is very much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's been a slight change of plan. Everybody back on the bus, please. You'll be delighted to hear that this afternoon's tour is the ruined abbeys of the Yorkshire Moor. <laughs> Tom, Tom. <laughs> 